Hi guys! Welcome back to another Colorful Keto with Dory. So today we are going to do a question and answer with Denise of Keeping Austin Keto. And I'm going to add her in right now and it's Keep Austin Keto. Let me add her in. Yeah, I'm so excited. You're sideways. I'll dance while you turn your camera. Oh. Do I have to, am I going to have to just hold it, I guess? I guess so. Uh-oh, that's Sorry, okay. Sorry, no. Make it work. Gonna... I'll give you a minute to get organized. Dance, dance. <laughs> I'll tell you what, girl. Technology, it's great when it works for us, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's all good. It's all good. So, we don't know you yet. So first, I, I just want to say hi. I, I'm Dory. If you guys haven't seen me before, um, I'm Dory of Colorful Keto with Dory. And my group is My Colorful Keto Buddy Dory. And this is Denise. I'm going to let you say hi. Hi. Uh, let's see. I run uh, the Keep Austin Keto page. Yes. Um, it's mostly a local page just because I'm trying to get some social meetups going here locally so that, yeah we do a lot of stuff you know on Facebook and we Yay. message each other back and forth that's all great but I, I want really wanted to build some relationships so I yes. um you know I'm just trying to keep it local and you know surrounding cities to where I'm at so that we can all kind of meet up and I hold it in different areas of the town so that way everyone gets an opportunity to come you know so I, I love great. that because you know what not a lot of people are doing groups a lot of people are out there but very few people are focused on local and on meetups. And I think that that's the key. To be able to come somewhere, meet people socially, make friends, hang out, do all of that stuff. So I'm going to take a peek. Oh, yay! Cindy, I've got my Cindy. We've got some of my ladies on Facebook. My darlings, can you do me a favor? And can you share this to our group so that it's going live? And Denise, do you have somebody who can share it to your group so that they're getting it at the same time? Or can you I did. share I was that? I was actually able to share that. So while you were talking really quick, I went on and shared it really quick on my other device. So oh, you're so smooth. <laughs> now, if you guys want to know how to share it on Instagram, when you're watching it, there's a little triangle on the bottom. If you click that, you can send it as a message. It will only be available for the 24 hours that Instagram keeps it, but you can send it to your friends and family as a message. So we can do it that way too. So let's start with... Um, we were talking the other day and we decided to do a live based on a topic. So I'll, I'll tell you guys what our topic is for today. And it's this, I, I want a keto, but I work in the food industry Help! because how many, I get messages all of the time. I, I work at a burger place. I work at a chicken place. I, I work in catering. You know, how do I handle off plan food all day? How do I, how do I do that and still make it work? For me. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So first, I'm going to let you say a little bit about your work situation, because this is personal for you, a little bit of an issue sometimes. It is. I'm a catering server, and so, let's see, I've got the, the messages right over my face. That's okay. Um, <laughs> so I'm a catering server, and when I work, you know, it could be a short shift, it could be a five-hour shift, which is great, um, you know. Five hours is okay, that's manageable, but when you roll into a 10, 12 hour day, um, you know, you've maybe had breakfast or you've had lunch and you still need dinner somewhere along the way. And um, I'm usually pretty good about bringing food with me, but you know, we don't have a place to keep that cold all the time. And then you run into, you brought something that's not going to be good by the time you get around to eating it. So then you're stuck without food or you didn't bring food. Oh. That's been an issue too on occasion. It's rare, but it's happened. And you know what? Yeah. Hands up, guys. Like, hearts if that's you. If this is something that you're struggling with. Because it's not always just when you work in the food industry. Maybe you work in an office and, you know, everybody goes out for lunch. Or they do office meetings in and they bring in lunch. Or, you know, the cursed event that happens and somebody shows up with cake or donuts or, you know, it's somebody's birth. And it's always something, right? Like, I've worked in offices. There's, there's something every single week. Somebody is showing up 
there with food. And for you guys, I'm sure there's lots of leftover, right? Like, oh, this didn't get all eaten by all means. Oh, we don't really need to make something for supper because we've got this. And, and it could be an assortment of, you know, what kinds of things do you usually serve? Are there keto options in what you serve generally? Um, you know, on occasions there are. It usually, like, uh, mentally I start out really well. I start out with, you know, thinking that I'm going to go to work and, and here's what you can have. You know, we know what we can have when we go to work. And, you know, we know what we can have at home. So um, that's an easy way to start. But then once you get there and you get to a place where it's been, I know, uh, I think it was Wednesday I worked and I did, you know, almost 10 straight hours. I worked two different events and I had to work one and I left from that one and I went straight to the other one. And by the time I slowed down, it was 7 o'clock in the evening, you know, until I really start being honest with myself and sharing with other people, uh, this is probably going to continue to be an issue. But, you know, when I slowed down at 7 o'clock, we're done with the event, and there's this little bit of leftover food. They're going, oh, you haven't tried this appetizer. Go ahead and try it. Oh, well, oh, it's you can so rationalize nice. that by saying, I haven't gotten to try this yet. I work for this company. I have to try this appetizer because I need to be able to tell people what it tastes like. That's always where mm -hmm. I've been with food, you know. And so to be in this place where I'm keto now and trying to fight off, you know, not having that in your head going, I need to try this because it's my job, you know. And that's so. a hard one. That is, that honestly is a hard one. But I'm going to say this. Now, imagine for me for a moment that it was something that you were allergic to and just not something you chose not to eat. Now, say you were deathly allergic to you know, bananas and somebody said, hey, try this banana. Our company made it. You really need to try it. That is part of your job. You, you wouldn't, you'd say, well, I'm sorry. I, I can't, I'd love to. And, but that will kill me. <laughs> I, I, I will have an allergic reaction. And I think that a lot of us struggle with that too, because how do you say to somebody, mm, no, I don't, I, I don't eat that. I'm sorry. Oh, what do you mean you don't eat that? Well, you don't really want to have a conversation with every stranger you walk upon as to why you don't eat that. Oh, Oh, you're not one of those weird, like, vegan people or something. Well, no, no. <laughs> and then you don't have time, right? Like, so how do you avoid that conversation as well? And we've actually talked about that quite a bit in, in my group because everybody comes across that. And you know what? It's okay to say to somebody, you know what? I don't eat sugar and carbs. I'm sorry. I would, I would love to, but they do bad things to my body, period. You don't have to say, you know, I, I do this diet, I do that diet. They do bad things to my body. I don't eat them. I'm sorry. I would love to taste that for you, but it, it does bad things to me. And, you know, those are, sadly, and that happens with our friends and families too, right? Like, you're going to go to grandma's house, and all of a sudden, you're not eating her mashed potatoes. What? Grandma might have a heart attack. You know that, right? Like, oh, yeah. she's got a weak heart. You could kill her because you didn't eat her potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, went out with my mom a couple days ago. And, uh, I, you know, I, there was, you know, we, we ate cookies once upon a time. And there was this favorite cookie that I knew she wanted. So I stopped at the store and bought them for her. And then when I brought them back out to the truck, you know, she offered me one. And she's like, can I have just one? And I'm like... No, no, I actually oh, can't I have can't. just one, Mom. Sorry, I'd this love to. They're my favorite cookie, trust me. But, uh, and I didn't have one, you know, and so. Okay, you know, that so. Was that. She just doesn't understand, but I just say, Mom, I can't have that cookie, and, you know. Do you want to hear my dirty cookie story? I'll tell you my dirty cookie <laughs> story. Oh, girl. Okay, so at Christmas time, by Christmas time, I had been keto eight months eight months, you know, I was like, oh, I'm really good at this, dude, I'm so awesome, I'm like keto AF, whatever, yeah, I am, and I, my girlfriend came over with her tin of cookies, every Christmas she gives me a tin of cookies, she makes the best cookies, like, she makes the bird's nest ones with the jam, and she makes the peanut butter squares, and the rocky road squares, and like, the really good whipped shortbread, and then rolled in nuts, and they're beautiful, and they came to my house, and normally, I, I won't lie, um, in pre-keto, I'm a dirty, dirty cookie hogger, <laughs> and, and I'd eat half of the tin to myself, and I'd leave the not-so-yummy ones, you know, not like they exist, but the ones I like less for my family, and when the tin arrived, I thought, I I've been eating good for eight months, like, dude, I have got this solid two or five cookies, couldn't hurt me, like, right? Two or five. <laughs> and, and Dory ate five cookies because Dory used to eat a whole tin of cookies. And I woke up in the morning and I couldn't poop. 
Uh-oh. <laughs> for the first time in my life. Like, I'm 42 years old. This has never happened to me. I woke up in a panic. I, I felt so awful. Like, so incredibly awful. And I was like, but it was just cookies. Cookies love me. Cookies love me. I know they do. But they don't. Wheat cookies don't love me anymore. And I, I called on, the only thing you can do, I, I called my number one keto wife and I messaged her and I was like, I'm dying. I'm actually going to die though. You don't understand this panic. Like, I, I'm dying. And she was like, oh, Dory, remember? Remember flax muffins? Oh, they love you so much, Dory. So I made a video. I made a video and I, I was in such a panic. It's even in my house coat. And I was like, so, you know, it's Christmas and maybe we ate some things that we shouldn't have and maybe we didn't. And maybe we can't poop. <laughs> and, and I just made a quick video and I showed people how to make a mint chocolate chip flax muffin. I drank lots of water. You add salt to the water. And I, I split mine into three little muffins. But I ate two out of the three little muffins. Lots of water. And 20 minutes later, I was a happy lady. So we do yeah. it. And, and we do. like, And nobody is immune. If you see my videos and think, oh, I bet Dory never did stuff like that. Dude, I did stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody does, but not enough people talk about it, you know. And even coming on today, I was like, oh, I have to talk about the ugly stuff, oh. you know, because nobody's perfect. You know, nobody's perfect. But you know but. what? It's the ugly stuff because those are the things that we hide because we think nobody else did them. And I'm going to say this. <laughs> when I was at my biggest... I, I hid other things too. I hid my food. I hid it so other people wouldn't too. see it, right? I didn't eat in public because it didn't matter, girl, if I was having a Diet Coke and a salad, people still stared me down like, do you realize you're fat? Like you're putting food in your mouth like you don't know you're fat. And I was like, dude, I realize I am fat. I get that. Like, I know that. You don't get to 290 pounds and not realize you are, but you get to a point where you literally can't even eat a salad in public. Because you feel like everybody's judging you. So it's the same That's thing terrible. when you start to eat healthy and you think, you know, everybody around me is doing so good. Like, I'm in this group and look, everybody's happy and everybody's got recipes and everybody's excited. I am the only loser who's not sticking to it. Right? And that's Yeah, it's difficult. I started out in January. I did really well, uh, but I wasn't losing weight. I just turned 41, and so I know I probably need to get some hormones and stuff checked out, but uh, I just wasn't losing weight, and, and I caved in about, I think it was like 45 or 60 days. I was doing like a 100-day challenge in this group, and, and I didn't make it, you know, and I was thinking to myself, why am I not losing weight, you know, and I went back to like what I was doing before when I was losing weight because my highest was... Well, the last time I stepped on scale was 257. Okay. So, and that was the highest I'd ever been. You know, before I had kids, I was 125. So, you know, I know I'm never going to be that weight again, but getting to a place this time where I'm healthy and happy and look good and feel good with the way that I look, you know, and I know that's going to take work, but. But um, you know what, though? I'm going to say this. I. Later, I'm going to do, I'm going to do a live a little bit later, but I want to talk to you about the three things that held me back. Because when I, I've spent a lot of time thinking about it, because when I hit my one year milestone, I never thought I'd make a year. Like, I, I really, I didn't. I, I decided I wanted to try something healthy. I, I didn't expect it would last. Nothing's ever lasted for me. I, I believe my diet record is a month of cheaty cheat. You know, you eat good for five days, and you're like, oh, look at me, I did good for five days. Chocolate bar! Nobody saw me eat yeah. it. It totally doesn't even yeah. count. To or totally doing five doesn't days count. Of keto and going, why haven't I lost any weight yet? It's been five whole days. Oh, girl, do you know what? I, I bless their souls. No, I get, I get those messages all the time. Dory, I've been eating healthy for three days. I did everything you said, and my scale hasn't moved. And I'm like, dude, I yeah. love you. Three days, it's not <laughs> gonna happen. No. But here's the problem: <laughs> because of those big sales, these groups, right, and the pushing of the shakes and the this this product and that product. People think that they can lose 20 pounds in a week or 20 pounds in two weeks. And I will have people message me and they'll say, Dory, I really want to have realistic goals. I'm setting realistic goals for myself so I don't fail. 10 pounds a week, that's a very realistic goal, yes? Baby girl, no. No. Back in the day when I dieted myself fat, I remember them saying you could expect a healthy lose 
two to two and a half pounds a week. And I was like, dude, I'm not even bothering for that. I'm not going to give up everything I love for two and a half pounds a week. Shove it. I'll just be fat. I'll just be fat. <laughs> like, I will. And even when I found keto by accident and I decided, these were the three things that were stuck in my head. It's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. It's going to be so hard, Dory. You don't know anything about it. It's going to be hard. It's going to be probably the hardest thing you do. It's going to suck. It's going to be hard. Number two, I'm probably going to fail anyways. Probably. Why wouldn't I? I failed at every diet I tried for 13 years. So I'm probably going to fail anyways. And number three, I'm going to have to give up everything I love. Everything I love. Like, I got fat by eating the food I love, and now I have to give it all up. Do I really want to be healthy that bad? Like, actually, though? Actually? And I decided when I, I first, did. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, when I first discovered, the first thing I discovered was Atkins. And I know it's a little bit different than keto. Similar, but though. the first thing I did when I lost weight. And the funny thing is, is that I was working in this diner, and I met this girl, and she said in, like, three months, she had lost about 25 pounds. And she was fairly petite girl, so we were like, where'd you lose 25 pounds at? Okay, tell me more about this, you know? <laughs> and she, I mean, she just looked really good, at least, you know, we always think everyone else looks good, but when we think about ourselves, we feel like, oh, oh. no, we could look a lot better, you know? Uh, Hands so up, that's me. To her and, uh, she was telling me she was reading this book by Dr. Atkins, and I thought, I can't, I don't want to do that, because I have to give up all this stuff I love, and so I went to the library and checked out the book, and I went to the store and done my grocery shopping, and at the store that I shopped at, you could buy prepared foods, like you can any, mostly any grocery store, right? Yeah. And so that meal um, consisted of fried chicken strips, mashed potatoes and gravy, corn, bread, you know, all those things. I mean, literally every <laughs> single one of those things was on that plate, yeah. and I'm holding this book over here, and I'm talking on the phone to my boyfriend's sister, and I'm looking at everything it says I can't have, and I'm going, there's no way that you're going to convince me that I'm not going to eat bread ever again. I grew up on bread. I had bread with every single meal. And <sighs> and then the next day, you know, then the next day I go, oh, well, maybe I'll just give this a try. And that's kind of where I got started with the low-carb thing was um, with a little bit higher protein, you know. Yeah. So that was kind of my – I love that story because I'm sitting there eating every single thing and, and saying to my boyfriend, sister on the phone that I'm not going to ever stop eating this stuff, you know. Never. And, and I did. I'll you know? never give it up. Uh, I'll tell you, I, I got roped in with the magic shake. Um, my girlfriend wanted to try the latest magical shake that you could lose, you know, 20 pounds in two weeks. I coughed up for a two-week supply because I was like, well, you know, whatever. I've got exactly 20 pounds to lose. So, you know what, why not? I can't afford it. But, you know, for two weeks, I'll try it. And the day the shake arrived, she calls me up and she's like, oh my God, Dora, I'm so excited. I Googled the best way to make use of the shake and there's a whole diet. And I was like, shove it. Girl, you better back away from me slowly right now. Like, did you just say the D word to me? Like, actually though. And she's like, no, 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 I know. I, I promise though, you'll really like this one. Like, you will. And I was like, you better shut up your face right now. Like, I, I will punch you. Like, I love you girl, but you better not be talking diet to me. And she made me promise to watch a video, which was, by the way, the driest, worst video I've ever seen. And I decided I hated it right away. I, I had my phone out. I was ready to press play. And I had my finger over the button. And I was like, that's right, diet dude. I don't like your face. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me all about your awesome diet. I'm ready. And I was hateful. Like, I was salty. I was miserable. And then he said bacon. And I was like, hey, big daddy. <laughs> Tell me more about this bacon. And he started talking about awesome food. And I, I watched it and I called her back and I was like, dude, sorry, I swore at your face. Love you. You can send me a little bit of information about your diet, like a little bit. And she sent me a couple things and I went egg roll. Like I didn't know there was groups. I didn't know nothing. Like I just started... I googled low carb, I wanted it, and I'm going to tell you a secret, I, I wasted two whole months, and I'm pretty sure a lot of other people do too, I wasted those months crying over food I'd never have again, so I took out a pen and a paper, and I wrote a list, <laughs> and I wrote a list of all the things I was kissing goodbye to be healthy, and I punished myself for deciding to be healthy, 
I used that list to punish myself. I was like, yeah, you want to be healthy? Guess what you never get again? Pizza. Suck it, pizza. And, and I thought I'd never have pizza. And I cried over pie. Oh my God, I'll never have pie. I eat that like three times a year, you know. Like, that's part of my every family function. Three whole times a year I have pie. I'm going to die without pie. And I wrote my list. And I, I dwelled. Like, I was miserable. I was sad. I, I was glad I decided to be healthy. But I hated every step of it. I was like, I, I hate this. This was stupid. Why, why did I say I wanted to be healthy again, honey? I know there was a reason. What was it? Oh, yeah, because yeah, I'm stupid. <laughs> And I, I don't miss pizza. You know, I used to be, I think my things were um, carbs, not sweets. And so I'm not necessarily a big time sweet person. But, I, you know, we're women. Every 21 days, we need something sweet. I yes. Do. And yes. so Shark I have to figure out how to, how to make sweets, you know. Okay. And, and that's fine. Oh, I'm going to tell you because I'm your new best friend. So my favorite Shark Week treat is the easiest thing you'll ever make. So it's a basic chocolate mug cake. You take two tablespoons of cocoa, one tablespoon of either heavy whipping cream or coconut milk if you're doing dairy-free, one egg, one tablespoon of oil, and then your sweetener of choice to taste. And I say that because every recipe will be like two teaspoons of this, two teaspoons of that, and you'll be like, oh, it was so bitter. What did they like? Ah. <laughs> so your sweetener <laughs> to your taste and you put it in a mug or a ramekin, you pop it in the microwave. If you put it in for 50 seconds, it's all lava-y and molten and runny on the inside. If you cook it for the full 90 seconds, it's a puffy chocolate cake that you can separate into layers and like drizzle stuff on, whipping cream. And it takes two minutes to whip up, two minutes to put in the microwave. My favorite Shark Week, because that happened at my house this week. I have two things that are staple for that that make it easy peasy. This is raw cacao butter. Now, this is like the raw form of white chocolate, but it melts down like butter. I'm going to tell you guys another secret. If you're fasting, it has no protein and it has no carbs. So this is pure fat. So it's another good fat additive. It tastes like white chocolate. It melts like butter. So you can use this in any of your baking recipes for white chocolate flavor. So I'll take a tablespoon of this. I melt it in the microwave, and then I add a tablespoon of Krista Stevia semi-sweet chocolate chips. And I drizzle that over. Last night while I was making dinner, I decided I needed a sweet treat. I don't have very many left. But I took a couple blackberries, and I drizzled them with chocolate, and one strawberry, and four, just four or five blueberries. And I drizzled them because I was like, you know what? I'm cooking dinner for everybody. I need a treat because I'm awesome. So I just did that quick in between while I was making supper. So things like that, you can have at hand, on hand at home and just keep them in your freezer. I, I make my own homemade um, ice cream fat bombs in like little ice cream sandwiches. So they're individual. So when you get that craving, it's there, it's ready, it's at home. Now, if you're going off to work, things that I like to do, now, I don't work outside of the home, but I used to. So I do know about packing lunches and, you know, working at offices where everybody has food. My number one favorite thing is take a mix of all your favorite nuts. Then what you want to do is you want to warm them up with a tablespoon of whatever healthy fat you want. So I usually do them in a little bit bigger jar. And if I'm doing a savory one, I'll add bacon fat. So I warm it up roll it in the bacon fat, season it with whatever I want, like Frank's Red Hot, and then just pop them in the oven to toast. If it's a sweet one, okay. I use coconut oil, I'll use um, sweetener and cinnamon. And then just same thing, coconut oil, coat them, pop them in the oven to brown, and it gives you, I, I have these on my counter. So one is Cajun, one is Frank's Red Hot, uh, one is garlic, herb and garlic, and one is a cinnamon spice. So they're just on my counter, and when anybody's snacky, they can just go in and grab one. But they're great for work. Now, these, you could keep a plastic version just in your purse. So if you had even just a small one each day that you can have to go with you. Because it's a unique situation for you. You're not always at the same place, right? At an office, you guys have access to a fridge. 
keep a dozen boiled eggs in there. Keep a couple raw eggs to just pop an egg cup in the microwave. Keep a little bag of bacon or cheese. But for you, because you're on the go, you need to plan a little bit better. Now, if you have, say, an hour on Sundays, make little bags of everything. So get yourself a bag of nuts, have a little bag of jerky, have a little bag that's got some fresh veggies in it that don't require refrigeration. You know, have a couple of those small things on hand and just have them in your fridge so that you've got Monday, boop, in your purse, you go. So things that require less refrigeration, you can make your own homemade jerky. I do that. So you buy your cheaper, fattier cuts of meat, slice them really thin, season them, and dehydrate them. Um, things like that. Nuts you can have on the go. Um, what else would I use? Um, depending on how long you were going to be gone, some jellied things you could keep. Like if you were to make gummy bears for a couple hours, they'd be okay in your purse. Or in a cooler bag, they'd be okay for four hours. But some of those things, like I make those kind of treats too. If you can have sugar-free jello, you normally add two cups of liquid. If you add between a quarter and a half a cup of liquid, it makes gummy bears. Like easy, easy peasy. You can add a little bit of <coughs> sweetener and citric acid makes them sour gummy bears. So you make your little gummy bears, you mix this with your sweetener, sprinkle it in there, and then you've got sour gummy bears. But they're just as easy to make as regular Jello. If you can't have the ingredients that are in Jello, because some people can't, they've got some nasty chemicals, you do exactly the same thing with one tablespoon of gelatin. You can use beef grass-fed gelatin, and then add whatever color and flavor you want to it. So one tablespoon of gelatin is equivalent to one box of Jello. Okay. So easy peasy. You can it's, make your own gummies. It's funny that you brought out that uh, the cocoa butter because I just I bought some a few weeks ago and I brought it home. I was excited about it because I discovered it in my. I have a health food store that's really close. And it, I like to pop in there every once in a while and I'll grab something and I'll wander down the aisles because I, I want to see if there's anything that I haven't seen yet. So I'll wander up and down the different aisles trying to discover. Like something I haven't tried yet. Cocoa butter was one of them. And oh. I brought it home and I tasted it and I was like, I don't like this. I had it to my boyfriend. <laughs> and I said, I don't like it. To make soap? <laughs> what do I do with it? So, so I'll, I'll tell you. Me what to do with it. I'm going to take it back. I don't think it's going to be Oh, <laughs> it's good. I'll tell you some of the things that I do with it. Because, girl, it is my, my favorite. So, number one, I use it in my Bulletproof Coffee. It's a good, healthy fat. I will caution you, though, because I don't add sweetener to my coffee. You don't want it to be too much because it is bitter. You tasted that, right? If you try to eat it out of the bag, it's not chocolate to eat out of the bag. Like, no. it, they're not a treat. You're not like, oh, yay, I'm eating them out of the bag. They taste like um, bitter chocolate wax that gets really nice and stuck in your teeth, and you're like... <laughs> So if you want to put like, I, what I do, I'll show you the amount that I use because I just had that right there. I just break off a little piece and I throw it in my coffee, but I don't use a huge bit. I use a piece about that big. Okay. And it will melt down like your butter in your coffee and it'll make your coffee taste like white chocolate. Then um, you can make a really, really nice uh, whipped white chocolate spread. So you melt this. You add olive oil or avocado oil or coconut oil, yeah. whatever other oil you want. You chill it just until it's cloudy, and then you whip it up with your food mixer, and it makes like a whipped butter spread that's dairy-free. I make something similar for my sister, and I'm going to do some fasting bombs with this as well. Because again, okay. no protein, it's just good pure fat, no sweetener in it. So we can use this when we're fasting too. But literally any recipe that calls for butter, you can use this instead. You just melt it down and use that instead and it's going to give you that really rich white chocolate. Now I have been trying to create a white chocolate chocolate bar with it to no success yet. I'm still working on it. I there's there's some issues with the ingredients all the recipes i've seen either call for powdered whole fat milk which i cannot get i do not have access to 
or they call for a protein powder and, and I don't like protein powder and I don't want protein powder in my chocolate. I just want chocolate. So I'm working on it, fingers crossed, because if I could do white chocolate, we could have butterscotch chocolate too, which is my ultimate goal for peanut butter squares, because peanut butter squares. <laughs> like, oh. I, had, I made some fat bombs last week, and I, I they were supposed to be, it was a vanilla bomb, and uh, so it was coconut oil and butter and then macadamia nuts. Well, I didn't have enough macadamia because the other person I live with is a nut fanatic, and he doesn't do portion control. He just will pick up a handful and eat them. And so he ate most of my macadamia nuts, yes. And uh, I was like, oh, I was like, I'm in the middle of this recipe and I don't have any more macadamia nuts. So Thanks. I substituted with pecan, believe it or not. And they, oh. it actually tastes like the pecan pie. I was so blown away by how it tasted. I was like, oh, a happy oh. mistake, a good, yes. you know. I, I'm going to tell you two I'm things. Uh, one, I refer to macadamia nuts as white gold at my house so my man knows better. I'm like, dude, I paid $16 for a pack that big. Yeah. If you're touching them, it better be one at a time. You get one nut. <laughs> <laughs> at, at my house, and what I'll do is... portion control that, like, one-fourth cup is a serving, and he looks at it, and he goes, what do you want me to do with this? And I'm like, eat one at a time. <laughs> eat, eat them one at a time. Now, I'm going to tell you this. If you do what I said, and you add the fat to the nuts, as crazy as it sounds, it makes them more filling. So with that extra added tablespoon of butter or bacon fat, you could use a spicy sausage rendered fat. That's one of my favorites to cook with. Any flavored fat that you want. When you're adding the fat, you're adding the full, right? So he's going to eat less. Sneak it in the fat. Make him flavored nuts. He's going to like them more. He's going to eat less of them. So this is what I do because I, girl, I save so much money at my house. I can't even wait to show you. So what I do instead, I don't buy any specialty meals, flowers, none of it. I go to Walmart and I buy the big old bag of nuts and I will bring home a container of pecan like this. And then I will bring home, this one's almost empty, a container of walnut. And then I have a large container of almond as well. So what I do from there is I've got the containers on my counter that my guy's welcome to snack from. So he's got his little containers. What he does is when he comes in, he's got his little nut bowl he takes out to the garage and he'll just scoop a little from each of my small containers to go to his bowl to take to snack out. Then I've got the seasoned ones that are on the counter that we can try to snack on. Then what I do is I grind up those into my own flours and meals. So this one is pecan. So I swap out, honestly, most of my almond flour for other flours. Pecan nuts are only 5 grams of carbs per serving instead of almonds, 10. So anything I cook with pecan instead is half of the carbs instantly. Same thing with walnut. Walnut is 4 grams of carbs per serving. So anything I make with walnut flour instead of almond flour, I've now cut the carbs in half. Now, this also works if you're nut free. This also works for seeds. So I will buy my pumpkin seeds whole and I just grind them into pumpkin seed flour. I make sunflower seed flour. I make sesame seed flour. You can make your own coconut flour, your own almond flour. All of those things, you just grind it up at home. Now, the beauty of that is guess what? I also get to make my own walnut butter, pecan butter, creamed coconut. It's exactly the same process. So I'm spending, you know, $18 on a bag of nuts. And then I've got my snacks, I've got my flour, I've got my butter, I've got my meal, and everything I'm making is half of the carbs than the commercial almond flour that I can go out and buy. Now for my house, and only I eat keto full time, but they love my snacks, my treats. If I make cookies, they're all a nut base. If I make fathead pizza, they're all in over that. If I make, you know, a faux rice with nuts in it, they're all over that. But I will buy one big bag, fills up this container, and it will last three months at my house. So if you're on a budget, buy one. Just pick one. Go out, buy a big bag of walnut, and then next payday, buy a big bag of pecan and start varying your nuts. But one, they taste better. Two, 
they're cheaper, three, they're lower carb, and you get to experiment. And I'm going to tell you, every single recipe I've tried is a one-for-one -one swap. So if it says one cup of almond flour, that's one cup of walnut flour. If it says a half a cup of almond flour, that's a half a cup of pecan flour, half a cup of sesame flour. The swap is the same unless you're doing coconut flour. And that's because coconut flour absorbs more liquid. So with coconut flour, say for example, you had a recipe for um, an almond pizza crust and you said, Dory, I'm allergic, can I make that with coconut flour instead? I would say yes. It calls for one cup of almond flour. Substitute that for one third of a cup. Oh, we're going to try to add her back in. We'll just give it a minute. So you would add one third of a cup of coconut flour instead. And you would add one extra egg and you would add some extra oil. So we're going to get her connected back in and then we'll pick up right where we left off. Connecting, connecting. There we are. We're back. Sorry about that, I got a phone call. Oh yeah, no, it's all good. It blacked out my screen and it made me think that I wasn't on there, but I think I was still on and just couldn't see, so I'm back. Oh, it's all good. So I had just left you on. The only different conversion is if you wanted to make something out of coconut flour, it absorbs more liquid. So if you said, for example, I want to make a pizza crust, it calls for one cup of almond flour, you would use one third of a cup of coconut flour and you would add one egg and you would add a little bit of extra oil because it absorbs more liquid. But any recipe from one to the other, you can swap out anything you want. I like that I do that sometimes because I feel like uh, when I use the almond flour, um, in any recipe, like I baked uh, a cake yesterday, I think it needed to cook longer um, based off the recipe. My, you know, ovens are different and everything. But I don't digest even those flours um, properly. Like when I eat it, I can just tell I'm having stomach issues. And so I don't do it very often. Like I lean more toward like the fat bombs and stuff like that. On occasion, I will bake something. Okay. But I just, I'm not one of those ones who do really well with it. I do better with. You know, I do like a crustless cheesecake and stuff like that, but I can't, like, I can't do the fat head pizza crust a lot. Yeah. I usually default to the cauliflower, uh, or I'll make a chicken crust pizza and I make sure yeah. it's really thin and have a couple oh, slices that's of yummy. that with a salad or something, you know? So I'm not yeah. just eating straight protein. Yeah. And um, you know what? I want to tackle that too, because for me, I, I process nuts exceptionally well, and I probably eat more nut-based foods than a lot of people do. But I want you guys to be open to that, because once you start eating keto, your body starts sending you signals, and you'll know. Like, you'll know right away. How long did it take you the first couple times you tried it to go, oh, maybe not for me? Right? Um, it wasn't very long. Even I've noticed some sensitivities to some nuts. Like, if I don't have them for a little while, and then I go, oh, I'm in the mood for some pecans. You know, and I guess I'm ignoring it right now, and I probably shouldn't at some point. But um, because I know, like, when you keep exposing yourself to something that you have even a slight allergy to, you become even more allergic to that item. So Okay, so um, let's do this instead. I'm going to show you my favorite nut substitutes. Because listen to your body, girl. If you know you shouldn't be eating it, we both know you shouldn't be eating it, right? I love you. Yeah. So I'm going to show you some of the things I sub out because there's a lot of people in my group who have nut sensitivities. Even one of my moderators, she's a nut-free house. So we do a lot, a lot, a lot of those kind of recipes too. So number one, flaxseed. Now, this is going to do a lot of variety of things for you. Um, this can be breakfast cereal. It can be hot or cold cereal. You can make crackers out of this. I make awesome flaxseed crackers out of this. The other version is the ground flax, right? So once it's ground up, same thing. You can make oatmeal. You can make porridges. It's a thickener for stew. Um, I use a lot of coconut in, ex in exchange. I, my container's empty. But you just buy this unsweetened shredded coconut. And that's coconut meal. It just sounds fancy when you say meal. It's just unshredded coconut, costs a buck a bag. Then I showed you the pecan flour, uh, the pumpkin seed flour. But any seed will come down into a nice soft flour like that. Now, psyllium husk, if you don't have this in your pantry, you need to. It's good for fiber. 
Um, I made last night, I made a bread that was kind of like a whole wheat style bread out of psyllium husk and blonde ground flax. And I made myself a grilled cheese out of it. So there's no nut in it and it's good high fiber, like psyllium husk and flax. That was all that was in it and the egg and the oil. So when I showed you the flax, that comes in blonde as well. And that just tastes a little bit different. So you can get it in the blonde, you can get it in the brown. Um, I also, let me see what else I've got. Oh, my absolute favorite lady, hemp heart. Hemp heart, super food. There is so much good nutrition in here. And these, again, you can use them for anything. You can sprinkle them on a salad. Um, I made some hemp heart faux oatmeal cookies at Christmas time. Um, it's the base that I use for a rice pilaf. Um, you use some of this, some, I use a little bit of nuts, some cauliflower rice, and it makes like a full wild grain rice. That is without nuts. Um, poppy seeds, for lemon poppy seed stuff, they're super low in carbs. So you can have those too, and they make kind of a fun colored substitute. Um, I've got here my sunflower seeds and my sesame seeds. So again, this is my sunflower seed flour. So you just grind it up. And I use this stuff to make like mini donuts and cupcakes and muffins and breads. And you can use this to make your fathead dough. So then it's not a nut base and they're lower in carbs and they're lighter for you. Now, if your issue is the dairy, there's ways around that too. But your problem is the nuts. So let's see what else I've got on my countertop. So these are my whole pumpkin seeds. So when I buy them, they just look like that. And then I grind them down. The, I do have a YouTube video about how to do this. And it's called uh, My 5 Money Saving Tips. And it shows how to buy your meat in bulk, how to make your own flours, how to make your own butters, and how to make your own homemade butter. And one other thing that I can't remember. Awesomeness, though. Check it out. <laughs> we actually make our own uh, nut butters. We... Um we like Thai chili peppers here, and so we make this Thai uh, pepper paste, and I use sunflower seeds to bring it, you know, add nuttiness to it, and uh, I like to think it helps with the heat, but it doesn't. So we use uh, the old, uh, the mocha head, uh, am I saying that right? So the old Spanish, um, am I saying that right? Oh, girl, like don't ask me. I pronounce everything wrong. I just pass it off as being Canadian, yo. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'll have to look it up now. It's that it's um, used in the Spanish culture, and so it's um, it's this big bowl, and it's it, they have a, a masher in it, and so you're doing everything by hand, and so we do a lot of that. With, well, my significant other does uh, with nut butters and stuff like that. We um, make those by hand. It's just so much cheaper. Oh, and it's amazing, and it's so so easy. Now I know we're gonna come up on our timer soon too, so I want to talk to you about this one. This is nutritional yeast. And it has sort of a slightly cheesy flavor, but a lot of vegans use it. I came across it in a vegan cheese recipe, but this has like, I think I was looking at the numbers with Wendy today, 15 grams of protein per tablespoon, like incredible amounts of protein. And it has a whole bunch of vitamin B and D and all the good vitamins in it. And I just buy it bulk. But again, you can just sprinkle it in and add it to anything that you're making. That's not free. And chia. Chia is one of my favorites. You can either use it as seed, and I don't know if you saw the other day I did a live about uh, a nut chia pudding, and this one... I didn't see that. I probably need to go back and watch that because I've been wanting to make that, and I haven't got to make it yet. It's so easy. Like You just start with your base of either coconut milk or almond milk, and then I just added, I added chia seeds. I added the nuts I like. Um, I added a little bit of flax seed, blonde, brown. I added some slivered almonds, a little bit of pecan, a little bit of walnut. And you can either serve it cold or you can heat it up hot. Now, for Easter, I made it all funky colors and made it like a kid's Easter breakfast. But it's a really good, quick, easy breakfast that, again, because you made it up the night before... You can throw a small one of these in your purse. Now, it's not going to last you all day, but if you eat it in the first two hours that you're at work, it'll be okay, especially if you're not using any dairy in it. Like, if it's a coconut milk and it's chilled and you put it in your cooler bag, it's going to be okay for at least a couple hours till first break. I think that's the other thing, too, is, um, you know, being a catering server, you don't always get breaks either, and then it's like, 
you know, my bag is, you know, stuffed somewhere with my food in it waiting for me. And there's times where I can't get to it. And then they're like, oh, if you're hungry, you know, have this. Grab yourself something from right here. And then you think, oh, man, I can't go run and grab my food. I have to eat what's right here in front of me because I have, like, maybe five or ten minutes to eat. And sometimes it really is just, it's that, it's that way, and you know. So, I, you know, that's the other thing I struggle with. It's like I'm good at getting to the point of prepping and having it with me most of the time. But, but you don't always have access to. Getting to my food is the problem, you know. That's, that's the bigger problem, getting to my food, you know. Okay. So how, how would you tackle that? Like, is there somebody at work that you could say, hey, you know what, I, I'm totally cool with just getting a five-minute break to eat. But I need to just run. Like, can you cover me that I can run? Is that something that's an option? Or do we have to talk about just forgiving yourself when it happens? Because sometimes, girl, you can't. Like, we're not all perfect. Hand to God, we're not all perfect. So sometimes we have to just accept things. You know what? That happened, but it doesn't have to turn into a setback, right? Like, it doesn't have to be, well, I had this, so I may as well go home and order a pizza, and then I may as well, you know, eat junk tomorrow, and then, well, you know what? I'll get back next week and next week and next week. It can just be a, like, you know what? I was in a rush. I ate something maybe I shouldn't have. Yeah, I think taking the initiative, and I haven't done that because I've been with a number of catering companies, you know, and some of that I work with, there's a lot of people that are younger than I am, and they can they can eat that stuff and not suffer the consequences, and so, or, or just go all day long with not eating. I'm not that person. <laughs> I can't go all day long without eating, and you probably don't want to be around me after a while. <laughs> Hang, so, hangry yeah, is maybe, real. Maybe with this company, it's different. I've finally gotten to a place where I'm with a company that I really like, you know, it's people my age and, you know, a, bit, a wide variety of people, but the, the owners are my age. And so okay. I think that makes it easier for someone who's a little bit older, or who has some more experience in the life and understand, you know, Hey, people go through things, people have needs and stuff like that. And they take really good care of me. So I think, you know, taking that initiative and just talking to them and saying, Hey, I need to be able to go grab my food. I can't eat this food. Yeah. It's probably going to be the way to go. So yeah, having this conversation with you is really helping me like figure out what I need to do to get to the other side. So, yes. Yeah. Okay, so what kinds of things do you like? And let's just do a quick, what can you keep like on hand, even like in your pocket style? What are your favorite kind of things? And I'll see if I can think of a few things you could carry with you. I mean, I, need, I like to do nuts, cheese, and chocolate. That's usually like my little go-tos that I do, something I can just keep on me that I know is one's not going to melt, the Lily chocolate bars, I usually try to keep a little piece of that um, somewhere, nuts, I keep those, I usually do like boiled eggs, I keep turkey um, on hand, matter of fact, I had turkey yesterday, we left the store, I was like, I'm hungry, and I had turkey, and I took and rolled it up, and with some pecans, and, and that's what I had, it was really good, so. That's um, easy. That's a good one. A couple rolls of sandwich meat in a bag. Girl, that is such a wicked snack. Like, that is a really good idea. You know what? Throw in a pickle in there. You can have a pickle Pickles. wedge to, you know, you like pickles? I, I do. I love pickles. Okay. <laughs> I actually hold on to the pickle juice and I make sure my significant other knows not to throw it away because I've got him also. I turned him on to pickle juice and so now right? we sip it together. <laughs> like like high tea, ones. darling. We drink, so, Pinky's yeah. up. <laughs> Pinky out. Yeah, we're, we're doing shots today, baby. Get out the pickle juice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, I love it. <laughs> and believe it or not, oh. he's one of those ones that holds his finger out. So when oh. I get the chance, I, I pop it out. He is that person. He's still that person. He's actually got me doing it now. And he'll look over and he he's like pointing at my finger. He's doing like this. Hello, and I look over darling. at my fingers out while I'm eating something. <laughs> Hello, darling. <laughs> Oh my god, I love it. So, no. my absolute favorite, have you tried pepperoni chips yet? I have not tried that yet. Okay, so super duper easy. Um, this is what you do. You take a piece of paper towel like this in three sections, fold it so you got two on the bottom, one on the top. You layer your pepperoni in there, and you put it in the microwave for one to one and a half minutes, and they come out crispy. So then they don't need refrigeration or anything either, and you can make yourself a little bag of pepperoni, salami, any of those um, those kinds of meats work. Pepperoni and salami are my favorite. And then they're just in a little baggie, and you can throw that baggie in your purse, keep it in your pocket if you have an apron. I do, and I meant to say, um, so I'm 
So I want to backtrack a little bit earlier. Yep. We were talking about the mug cake. I would love to make that, except for I don't have a microwave. So okay. I've been trying to look online to see if there's a recipe for that same kind of thing. I guess in the oven. There is. Or a, con- a conventional oven or those little, you know, the there ones is. that sit on the countertop. It's exactly the same recipe. You put it in a ramekin and you bake it at, depending on the heat of your oven, between 250 and 300 for anywhere between 15 and 20 minutes, depending on how firm you want it to be. So when when I do it in the microwave, it's exactly the same thing. You prepare it exactly the same way. You just put it in your oven to bake instead. And you can totally bake. I know a lot of people use those for a quick, like, go-to treat. So that's the whole purpose of the microwave is so that you can have it in a minute and a half. I just, I don't have a microwave. I don't. I personally do not use microwave. I haven't had one probably in 15 years. Do you know what? You're not the only person. (laughs) I'm going to tell you that right now. It's not just you, darling. I've had multiple people inside and outside of my group be like, Dory, I don't have a microwave. Either because I don't have, I don't want, or sometimes it's because they give me the lecture about how I'm ruining all my food with all of the microwaves. Uh Yeah, it's, it's a little of all the above for me, so I'm kind of there. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, and everybody has their preference, right? Like for me, yeah. without my microwave inconvenience, I think I might die. Like I, I really actually think I might would die. Um, but I have a lot of uh, countertop appliances too, right? And I utilize a lot of those. Like we have an indoor grill and a pancake grill and, you know, this electric frying pan. And oh, dude, I swapped out the crummy oil in my deep fryer for lard. Deep fried is back on the menu at my house. And now deep frying is adding healthy fats. Every time I deep fry, instead of being like, oh my God, I'm terrible, I'm eating garbage, I'm like, look at me and all the healthy fat I'm adding to my food. (laughs) Such a good girl. And I made fried chicken again for the first time last night. I guess I'd been eating so much chicken that I I got away from it for a little while. I was talking to another local friend who's doing keto, and he's like, man, have you had fried chicken and lard yet? And I was like, hmm, it's been a little while. No. So I got out my cast iron skillet last night, and we made fried chicken and it was amazing and lard it was amazing and you know what you don't even have to put anything on it when I did my chicken I did naked chicken so I just put the chicken legs in there and I let them crisp up until they're crispy like wings but no coating no batter no nothing like just naked legs naked legs and they were awesome exactly awesome um we did uh we recently did fish fillets and oh my goodness i'm going to share the secret with you for those because they were amazing i just took like plain white cheap old white fish and then i put it on a piece of um plastic wrap whatever parchment paper i sprinkled one tablespoon of coconut flour and then i added my seasonings to that like huge style like you would when you do a breaded fish so i did one that was like salt and cracked pepper one that was frank's red hot But I sprinkled my seasoning in there and I just dredged and pressed the raw fish into it and deep fried it like that. And it was crispy. It was beautiful. I posted it on my feed and I was like, fish this good doesn't need chips. And it didn't. Like nobody in my house complained I didn't make french fries. Everybody sat down to the plate of deep fried fish and nobody complained there was no fries. It was awesome. Interesting. I think I did see that. You know, we have so much stuff in our news feed. Mm. Um, I think I did. I remember seeing that, actually. So you, did you just do a dry? I, I know, didn't put any egg or anything. I just took the fish like it was when it thawed, and I just dipped it in my coconut flour. So the fine flour, not the meal, the really fine flour, and with whatever seasonings. And then I just deep fried it like that. And then for the sauce... Um, I just used mayo, I'm going to say about two tablespoons, about that much mustard, and then you add a little bit of sweetener, and then cut up dill pickle for homemade tartar sauce, and it was awesome. Um, I also make uh, homemade Big Mac sauce, which is just mayo, and then you add sour cream, paprika, a little bit of sweetener, and cut up pickle. That's it, and it's awesome good too. My, my guy will eat that on everything because he's like, oh, it's like Thousand Island. He'll put it on his salad. He puts it on his burger. He'll dip his chips in it. Uh, I've caught him putting it on his broccoli. He's decided he'll eat broccoli with mac sauce. <laughs> <laughs> I, I make a, a version of Thousand Island, too, because it's one of my favorite dressings. I actually do uh, tomato paste, believe it or not. So okay. Anytime, yeah, I do tomato paste, and um, 
and mayonnaise, and I'll do that as my base for the Thousand Island and pickles. You know, it's kind of the same thing with tartar sauce, mayonnaise, sour cream, some onions. I'll usually add some onions in there, onions and pickles, because I like mine to have oh, that texture and flavor in it. So oh. I, I do that. I make my own ranch dressing. I found this amazing recipe online that I've made a number of times already, and um, it tastes like that stuff I remember having when I was a kid, not like the stuff they're making in the stores today. Yes, oh. it's the same brand, but it tastes different. Oh, they're changing so different. You know? have, have you tried bacon mayo yet? Um, we've made it a few times. I know, oh. let's see, who was talking about that? Was it me? Dr. Kenberry was talking yes, about that the other day. I talked him into it. Bacon grease for mayo. And he, I mean, just like the lights went off and he's like, I want to make that. I want to make that. <laughs> oh yeah. It was, we were talking in a live and I was like, yeah, I'm going to make that dude. And he literally got off the live and he made it and he sent me pictures on, on private message. Look what I made Dory. And I made it that night too. So we were talking bacon mayo. I make it in my house once a week if I have the bacon fat, but it's like gold at my house. I'm out. I actually, you know, heartbreak of heartbreak. I have more fast bomb recipes. So I said to my guy, oh, we're going to have to have bacon. I need the bacon fat. You're gonna, you're gonna have to take one for the team, dude. I love you. Yeah. It's bacon time. <laughs> so I wonder if with the uh, the bacon mayo, if you could just use lard. I wonder if you could do that. Or if it would be too clean, not enough flavor. You can use anything you want. So the base to make your mayo is four egg yolks that you whip up. So you whip that up, and then you add one cup of any healthy fat you want. It can be olive oil, it can be avocado oil, it can be ghee, or how did they say that, ghee? I don't know, ghee, uh, ghee, ghee le fleur. he's like a hockey guy, whatever. Um, anything that you want, <laughs> coconut oil, as long as it's a good, pure, healthy fat, you want it to be a liquid form, so if it's lard, you need to melt it, and then you want to slowly whip it into your pre-whipped eggs. Now, you can add just a teeny little bit of uh, tartar sauce, or not tartar sauce, uh, cream of tartar, or um, what is it, um, apple cider vinegar. Just a teeny bit to help bind the eggs as they whip up really nice and frothy. And then you add whatever fat, and then it's that kind of mayo. So it'll either be olive, olive oil or avocado, you know, lard, whatever you use, you can make it out of that. So don't be intimidated by it has to be bacon because it can be any fat that you want. Pick what you like. Everybody has preferences. I love coconut, but I think I've gone coconut blind. I don't taste it in anything anymore. Uh -huh. I usually buy, there's this one brand I buy. I don't know if you can get it where you are or not. Um, it's this really young girl. Oh, oh, you're back. Can you still see me? Yes, I can. Okay. Uh, You're I, can't, back. I can't see myself. It's okay. <laughs> I don't know what happened. So it's, it's called Kensington Mayo. And it, I think it, you know, it still says it has a little bit of sugar in there, but I sacrificed so many other things um, that I'm willing to use this because it's all the other ingredients are organic. So it's sunflower oil based. Um, and so, and I really like it. It's super clean. They also do, um, I think she has one that's avocado. It's a little bit more expensive. And I, I swear, I think she's under 30 who created this company. Nice. Um, so, so it's been really nice. I make so many things from scratch that that I'm willing to sacrifice that thing, you know. Yes. And and let's sign off on that because we're getting the uh, 1 minute and 43 seconds remaining. Okay. I, I love okay. that Instagram has a one hour timer. I love it because I ramble. <laughs> and I'm going to say that. You know what? You need to have a few things that are a give. And when I first started, condiments were my first give because things matter when they matter. You know what? When I first started, I decided I don't eat a lot of condiments. I'll have this or that. Then when it mattered, you start to make your own. So don't pressure yourself into, I'm starting. It's day one. I have to make this. I have to make that. I have to buy this. Do it a little bit at a time. So I'm going to let you have the last minute. Uh, I just want you to share a little bit with us about your group, where you're going, and who you want to come check out your group. Um, let's see. So I want to make, um, you know, options for people. I, I want to spend time making recipes. I don't want to just post recipes in the beginning. I was doing that. I was posting recipes when I saw it. Oh, that looks good. But I realized all recipes aren't accurate and, and people, they're not going to talk the same way for everyone. Yeah. So making sure that I'm making those recipes and sharing them with people and helping educate people, um, you know, 
I don't know if it's good to keep it local or not. I'd like to try to keep it as local as possible. And I feel like the more you open it up, you have an opportunity for more people to see your stuff. So for right now, I'm going to say that I'd like to try to keep it as local as possible and just keep the meetups going. I'm actually going to do a fat bomb meetup uh, sometime this month. That's my next meetup. So oh, we're going to yeah. do little recipe cards and we'll bring those and we'll bring um, oh. fat bombs for people to try. That's kind of my plan. And then also be able to build relationships locally. So when you want someone yes. to hang out with, you need someone Seven. to call <laughs> closer to home. All right. Thank you so much. I love you, doll. Have a great day. Let's do it again soon.